HSC coach presentation is for the two unit engineering studies course. My name is Scott Sleep and I am the current head teacher teaching and learning at Maitland Grossman High School. Previously I was the head teacher industrial arts for 10 years and I'm currently completing a PhD in engineering at the University of Newcastle. I have experience as a casual lecturer in both undergraduate and postgraduate engineering education. I have experience in uh, marking for the HSC engineering paper for the last 10 years. In this first session, I would like just to discuss about some general information uh, about the syllabus and the HSC examination, which will hopefully help you to improve your results. First of all, I'd like just to mention about the engineering study syllabus. It is quite a unique syllabus in the fact that it is particularly designed for people who have an interest in becoming an engineer or in the related engineering fields, either in the TAFE level as an apprentice or in um, the university level as a graduate engineer. And if you keep this in mind whilst you are actually doing the course, you'll get a better understanding of what the course is all about and how to actually attack it in regards to a subject. Um, students undertaking um, this subject uh, need to um, have a, a fairly good understanding of mathematics and science concepts and using technology in order to be able to um, look at business and management structures. In terms of the examination, um, we just have a, a quick look now in terms of uh, what is occurring. Be aware that the engineering studies uh, syllabus uh, and HSC has been around since 2001 to 2012 and will continue on with a new course from 2013 onwards. Prior to that, the course used to be known as Engineering Science. So the specifications and what you will see in old papers will be different from 2013. I'll draw your attention to the fact that um, it is a three hour paper and that there are now two sections in previous um, iterations of this syllabus, there were three. So again, previously from 2012, you would have had 10 multiple choice. In this paper from 2013 onwards, there are actually 20 multiple choice questions. They um, are based off four units. Previously, there were, there, were only, there were five modules. So the four modules that are now done are civil structures, personal and public transport, um, aeronautical engineering and telecommunications and they are covered in um, or basically in the exam 25 percent of the marks come from each. So looking at section 2 which is worth 80 marks they are all short answer responses. The difference between um, previous papers from 2012 back is that um, we now have a, at least two marks that are going to be six um, to eight marks in value and they will be an, uh, an extended response type question. They will contain various parts, there's generally seven short answer um, type questions which have various parts within them of course and within that um, you'll find there's around about 25 items. In terms of equipment for the HSC, be aware that these things can change from year to year and you need to speak to your teacher or need to go to the Board of Studies site to check that if these specifications haven't changed. A lot of times I see students turn up to trial exams in the HSC and they don't have the appropriate equipment. If you do that, you, there's, there is a chance that you will not get the level of marks that you, that you should in the HSC. So first and foremost, you have to have a calculator. It has to be board um, approved. You can find out if your calculator is board approved by going again onto the Board of Studies website. You can't use programmable um, type calculators that you've just got from the shop because it can be uh, seen as a misadventure that you are actually cheating. You do require a compass. Now, in previous years, some of the papers didn't require a compass, so make sure you turn up with one of those. Um, a protractor and later on I'll talk about when we're actually looking at mechanics and the fact that it is far more efficient to use a graphical solution so a protractor is an absolute uh, essential. I also suggest to you even though in the graphics sections 
that you must um, do sketches, you are allowed to use drawing equipment such, a, such as set squares. So come prepared with set squares. Now, one thing that is optional is a circle template, either isometric, this one is just a, a plain circle template. If you have used these before, then they are fine to go in. They can be a time-saving device. However, be aware that I have had students that have, have tried to use circle templates for the first time during the HSC and they don't know how to use them and they get the orientations wrong. So therefore, they have uh, lost marks because they don't know how to use them. So only use circle templates if you're comfortable with using them. One thing I'd like to draw to your attention as well is at the back of your paper, you will find a formula sheet. Now, the formula sheet from 2013 onwards is different from the formula sheet from 2012 back. Be aware of that change. There are more, um, there are more formulas on this than there were previously and they are a really good uh, resource to use. I'll talk more about that, about that later, but be aware and use it as part of your study process in regards to getting um, familiar with the, the formulas that are on, on there. Just a, a quick um, little bit about the performance band descriptors. What you need to know here is um, the fact that when the judges for the, the HSC look at your performance in the exam, they judge it against these band descriptors. I'm going to talk a little bit later on about the fact that you need to plan your, your attack on the HSC. So if you're going to do that, one of the things you need to do is determine what sort of mark that you want to get. So I always encourage my students to aim for a band five or a band six results. The band descriptors will tell you what you need to do to be able to get that result. And if you look through them, what you'll see is they're very similar in terms of the wording all the way through. But what, what changes is the verbs. That's meaning that the higher order thinking skills are actually in the um, higher bands and that's what you need to be able to show. In this section I'd just like to talk to you briefly about your general study techniques that will help you to achieve to your full potential in this subject. As in any subject you need to be thoroughly prepared. To do that you need to set plans in place so that you are confident when you sit that exam. So that means that you must put a, a, a significant plan in place from the start of your studies in year 11 and be prepared to do the hard yards and the work required to be successful. If you do this, the rewards will be quite high. That is HSC success plus the potential of vocational work and eventual career in engineering or engineering related fields. Some simple study strategies which you need to be aware of. First of all, you really need to know how your brain works. So what scientists have, have discovered about the brain is that it is like a muscle. So when new informational concepts come in, it is lost in a very quick time. So in around about four hours since the time that you have new concepts, you start to um, get some memory drift. So that has implications for you. So when you go home of an afternoon, if you revise your work, then you have a much better chance of being able to recall that. And they also know that um, once you revise it once, the length between the memory um, loss is, becomes greater. So if you do a, some, a regular um, repetitive um, study or revision of your work, you're not going to have to study for the HSC because you'll already know the work. As in every subject, they'll expect you to make study notes. Can I also suggest to you that you need to learn how to make study notes? It's not something that all students know how to do. So work with your, your English teacher, work with your careers advisor, work with your engineering teacher to work out how to summarise correctly. But you need to have thorough summaries. That is a learning technique. By making summaries, again, you won't have to study because you'll already know the work. I'm a big believer in the adage that a picture's worth a thousand words. With the concepts of engineering, a lot of them are very easy to be able to make graphical. For instance, Bernoulli's principle, um, uh, the Venturi effect, uh, all the things related to lift, Archimedes principles, uh, all the, the structures in terms of engineering uh, manufacturing techniques can all be drawn 
If you can actually do a, a sketch and be able to um, detail that, you may not need to have to put any words down in your answers. But certainly, uh, it's a very important. Also, in, in regards to just learning the work. So if you're not going to use it in an exam, but in your summaries, it'll help you to understand the concept and it'll help you to, to work it out. Obviously, with the mechanics section, you need to complete as many sample problems as, as possible. And again, going back to this memory um, aspect, that if you do that regularly, again, when you from three months down or four months down from when you did that work in the classroom, you'll remember it and be able to repeat it. Obviously, like in all subjects, completing HSC papers. I suggest that you do that after you know the content. So once you are comfortable with the content, you then need to hone your skills by completing as many HSC papers as possible. Remembering that the HSC has changed from 2012, sorry, from 2013 onwards, but the 2012 paper back to 2001 is still very similar to the structure that you will now be used to. One thing that I always tell my students as well, because as I alluded to before, that I want the students to achieve to the maximum potential, that is band five, band six results. And most of our students, when we set that high, um, that high bar, they achieve it. To do that, you have to read more widely. So that is, get all the textbooks for all the different subjects and you need to read them. You need to go onto maybe YouTube and discover how to um, get more details of how to complete different um, engineering mechanical tasks. You need to perhaps even go to things like Wikipedia uh, or other online resources which will allow you to, to learn these concepts better.